The following is a production of Texas Lutheran University. For more information, please visit tlu.edu. As we gather together this afternoon, 
We are all very reminded of the tragic events that happened yesterday in Connecticut. I ask you that you would join me in a moment of silence as we remember the victims of that tragedy. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, source of all that we have and have become, as this year comes to an end on this day of graduation, we stand at time's door preparing to enter more deeply into the life that you've given us to live. We give thanks for Texas Lutheran University. We give thanks for the many and diverse people who here in this place have touched our lives forever. Good and gracious God, Guard yesterday as a source of precious and profound memories. Fill our hearts today with joy as you bring us to the close of our time in this place. Bless our tomorrows and let them be times of new beginnings, filled with signs of hope and opportunity. Continue to lead us with your vision and unite us as your people. Send us forth boldly to run the race set before us, empowering us in our witness and strengthening us in our serving. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Please be seated. Good afternoon. As president of Texas Lutheran University, it is my privilege to welcome you to this ceremony of commencement. The December class of 2012 has just completed all that the catalog requires for graduation and thereby earned a degree from Texas Lutheran University. This is a major achievement, and you and your families are justifiably proud, and we are too. You're about to receive a diploma that is the emblem of years of hard work and sacrifice, but you would not be here without a large network of supporters. Commencement is one of the great family events, and this afternoon we recognize the sacrifice and encouragement of parents, grandparents, brothers, sisters, cousins, aunts, and uncles. So let's welcome the family members of our graduates. Over the past weeks, as you looked ahead to this day, you did no doubt spent some time reflecting on your time at TLU. Most of it is great memories, but there were certainly some rough times too. Classes that seemed impossible, disagreements with roommates, family issues, and there may have been times when you couldn't see a path to today. That you kept going testifies to your character, but also to the unwavering support from a faculty and staff that was inve invested in your success and that inspired, motivated, and counseled you all along the way. And let's welcome faculty and staff. Many of you came to this university because you were encouraged by people who had gone here before. And many of you are legacies, children or grandchildren of graduates of the university. They join in your celebration too. A special welcome to TLU alumni. And of course, none of us would be here today if it were not for the leadership and careful stewardship of the Board of Regents. Representing the Regents today are Board Chair Robin Melvin, Vice Chair Louis Westerman, and Louise Marino. Welcome and thank you, Regents. Uh, and it's always a pleasure uh, today to, at any time, to welcome back my predecessors, former presidents of Texas Lutheran University, Dr. Charles Osterreich and Dr. John Moline. Thank you for being here. Both. We are especially honored today to welcome back one of our own, Dr. Carmen Tafoya, poet, poet laureate of the city of San Antonio and former TLU professor and distinguished alumna. Dr. Tafoya is an internationally acclaimed author, poet, educator, and dramatic performance artist. A native of the West Side Barrios of San Antonio, Dr. Tafoya was told by her junior high school principal that she had the potential to make it all the way to high school. And so she did and kept on going. She began her college career here at Texas Lutheran College and went on to earn her bachelor's and master's degrees from Austin College in Sherman 
and her PhD in foreign language and bilingual education from the University of Texas at Austin. She returned to Texas Lutheran to direct the Mexican American Studies Center. Among her many accomplishments there was establishing El Premio Salinas, an award still given annually to a Texas Lutheran student who demonstrates an, extraordinarily, an extraordinary commitment to promoting human understanding and cultural harmony. Dr. Tafoya has held faculty and administrative positions at other universities in Texas and the Southwest, including Cal State Fresno and Northern Arizona University. She currently is senior lecturer in bicultural and bilingual studies in the College of Education and Human Development at the University of Texas, San Antonio. She has spoken and presented readings and dramatic performances at numerous universities, school districts, conferences, and special events throughout the United States, Mexico, and Europe. Dr. Tafoya is one of the most anthologized of Latina writers. Her poems, articles, essays, short stories have appeared in more than 200 anthologies, textbooks, journals, and magazines. And she is the author of more than 20 books of poetry, short stories, nonfiction, and children's literature, and has written seven tele television screenplays and one feature-length feature -length film script. Her works are archived at the University of Texas Benson Latin American Collection. Dr. Tafoya's many honors include introduction into the prestigious Texas Institute of Letters in recognition of her outstanding literary achievement. She is also a member of the San Antonio Women's Hall of Fame. And earlier this year, San Antonio Mayor Julian Castro named Dr. Tafoya the city's first poet laureate. In 2005, Texas Lutheran proudly presented her the university's Distinguished Alumna Award. Dr. Tafoya, we are delighted to have you back on campus. Welcome home. Thank you, Dr. Dorsey. It is truly an honor for me to stand before so many fine young graduates today. Isn't it stunning? looking at them out there, looking at all that is ahead and all that is possible in their lives. And it is especially an honor because they are the graduates of Texas Lutheran University, a very, very special place that creates a unique kind of education. It's also an honor for me to stand with their faculty wearing the regalia of their academic accomplishments. The very first time I saw a faculty process in regalia, you know, all these caps and robes and things that are on us today, it was on this very campus about 43 years ago when me and Tyrannosaurus Rex were both freshmen here. <laughs> I, uh, I had gone to something that was in the schedule that I didn't understand called chapel. And we were in Wynn Chapel. And I went to the chapel because some of the upperclassmen recommended it. They said there were lots of interesting speakers and stuff, so I went. We were all seated. We were ready for something to happen, and suddenly this formal march music started, and all these strange people dressed in velvet robes and funny hats started flooding through the aisles, and I was flabbergasted. It looked like something straight out of Shakespeare. I didn't know if we'd been transported back a couple of centuries or if, or if they were taking us on a magic time uh, travel tour of history. There was Tom Wilkins in his red velvet robes and Dr. Joe Min with colors draped across his cape. Uh, Dr. Evelyn Strang, uh, names that, uh, Dr. Charles O'Strike, names that you would recognize today. And it was absolutely an otherworldly experience for me. I had no idea why or what the meaning was for this strange procession in these elaborately colored robes. But I soon came to appreciate the meaning of this procession, and I would like today to discuss the meaning of this procession, not as an end, but in honor of you, as a commencement, a beginning. I choose the concept of a beginning and a commencement, because this is a moment at which you have a chance to reach out towards your dreams and to serve your community. And believe me, the two are tied together. Dreams is a funny word to describe this. 
but it's an appropriate one, for that dream deep inside you, waiting to come into full bloom, needs to be nurtured and listened to, watered and fed by meaningful actions. It has been nurtured to this point to get you to this point of commencement. It has been nurtured by your faculty and your community, your fellow students and your family. But these meaningful actions, this service to your community, adherence to your ideals and your beliefs, the hard work of planning projects and hopes and reaping the pleasure of goals accomplished is what life is made of. We all have dreams. And some of you would like to say, well, actually, I'm, I'm a very pragmatic person. I don't have dreams. I have plans. And to that, I'd like to answer what John Chancellor, uh, famous, now deceased newscaster, said. You want to see God laugh? Tell him your plans. <laughs> because plans can be changed. But dreams are the end goal. Dreams are where you want to be. Dreams survive on a higher plane. And perhaps we all have these dreams, sometimes hidden inside, sometimes we're embarrassed to tell others, sometimes we're scared someone's going to laugh at us. You know, what if I tell them what I want to be and they laugh at me? What if I tell them what I want to be and they remember it and then I don't make it and they'll think of me as a failure? But the dreams are all we have to hold on to. Let me tell you about my dream. I grew up on the west side of San Antonio. It was not considered the best side of town. It was considered the worst side of town. I went to one of the worst elementary schools in town. It was the last school in, in San Antonio that they considered important enough to have a fence around it or playground equipment. That didn't happen until after I graduated, but we were there anyway. I went on to a, a middle school, a junior high, that was considered the worst junior high in town. And so we were frisked going in and out of the cafeteria every day to find out if we had our switchblades or our knives or whatever. And yet I had a dream, like everybody has a dream, and sometimes we work at hiding it or burying it deep inside us. My dream was a really weird, crazy dream. I dreamed of being a writer, and I don't know why I dreamed of being a writer, because I didn't know any writers. I didn't even know the names, really, of writers. I'd never met any writers. We didn't have libraries on my side of town. We didn't have a library at our school. So why I came up with this dream, I don't know. But dreams are born inside you because you are unique, and you are special, and you are the only person that can achieve a particular mission in life that you were put here to achieve. And I think because of that, you need to listen to those dreams. You need to keep them in mind as you work towards them. Years passed. I was all of 11. And I still dreamed of being a writer. And I don't know where I got the idea, but I guess it was when they finally put the library in and I was able to check out books. And I would open the book, and right behind the copyright page, it would say, Random House New York and Little Brown New York or Double Day New York, I began to think that if you wanted to be a writer, you had to be born in New York. All books came from New York. You had to write about the things that happened in New York. You had to write about important things like Central Park or the Statue of Liberty. And I thought, gee, I don't have a Central Park, but I'll try. So I tried to write my first novel, and it said, one day, while walking through the middle of Central Park, comma, in New York, comma, and that was it. I was stuck. That was the end of my first novel. I had no clue what Central Park looked like or what you could do there or what would happen there. I had nothing to write about. I said, gee, if only I'd been born in New York, I might have been able to be a writer, but I'm just me, just here with my circumstances. There's no park at the end of the block. At the end of my block, instead of a park, there's a tortilleria where an elderly woman would make tortillas for a penny each. And she was old. She was ancient. She was so old, she could barely make it all the way up to the front counter, which wasn't a counter like in a store. It was a counter in the front room of their home. They lived in the back. They sold tortillas in the front. So she would amble up to the front counter, and the little kid from down the block would cut line in front of me, slap seven pennies on the counter, and say, siete tortillas, Por favor. 
And the old lady would start to count out those pennies one by one, very slowly. She would say, uno, dos. I had a long while to wait, and while I waited, I studied her face. And her face was brown and wrinkled. It looked just like the dirt does in the middle of summer in Seguin when it hasn't rained for a long while, you know? And the charcos are all dried up, you know? All those mud puddles are just not a drop of water anywhere in them. And they're all cracked and dry and little brown squares. That's exactly what her face looked like, those little brown squares. And I thought, I know why. I know why she and the dirt look alike, because they're the same age. She's the oldest breathing creature on the face of the planet. That's what it is. And then the sunlight came in through the window and hit her hair, and her hair was so white that when the sunlight hit it, it's like they were sending vibrations back and forth. They were talking to each other. They were sending rays of conversation, saying, Hey, ¿cómo te va? ¿Cómo te va este siglo? Oh, this century's a real bummer. Yeah, but the next one, I hope it's better. Yeah, me too. Que te vaya bien. They were talking to each other, her hair in the sunlight. And I said, I know why. Because they're the same age. They have the same birthday. She is the oldest breathing creature in the solar system. And then I looked at her hands. She was about on cuatro by now. And her hands didn't look like they were made out of hands. They looked like they were made out of the masa that she'd been working all day long to make those tortillas. And I thought, oh my God, she is the oldest breathing creature in the universe because no civilization would be possible anywhere in the universe without Mexican food. <laughs> and just as I decided she was the oldest breathing creature in the universe, she finished up with siete. She put those seven pennies in the pocket of her delantar. She turned around to yell to the back of the house for a little bit of help. Because when you're the oldest breathing creature in the universe, you deserve a little help. And she yelled, Mama. <laughs> and her mother came out and helped her turn the tortillas. And I thought I had nothing to write about. I thought I had nothing to write about because I didn't respect who I was or my uniqueness or where I came from. I was still thinking we need to be like everybody else or something. And you know, your uniqueness is what you have, exactly the way you are. Yeah, maybe you didn't make the 4.0 this semester. Maybe you didn't make the most baskets of anybody on the team. Maybe you didn't sing that song quite the way somebody else did. But you have a unique set of qualifications to take forth in life. I didn't know that at that time. And the years passed again. And one day, I became an author. Some miracle or other, I'm not sure what. And I got a poem published in a book, and a poem published in another book, and a story published in another book, and it kept going to the point that, I don't know how many books I have today, they're 20-something, but I don't stop to count, because it wastes too much time, because I enjoy writing, I enjoy doing what I like to do. So there are 20-something books. I brought one for your library, my latest, Rebosos, like the one that the old lady was wearing when she was counting off the centavitos. And I looked at all that I had published, and I found out there was one piece that had been published more than anything else. It wasn't about New York, or Rome, or Paris, or universal world issues. It was a, a little tiny 10-line poem about an elderly woman at a tortilleria and her mother. And I'm convinced that there was a reason that that was the piece that has traveled the most widely. It wasn't because if you want to be a writer, you have to grow up either in New York or on a block with a tortilleria at the end of it. It was because it came from inside who I really was, who I uniquely was, and your best, your brightest, your highest potential, your most ingenious, your most dynamic, your most amazing, intelligent, 
successful ideas and accomplishments come from being who you really are, just the way you are, with a lot of work and a lot of help and a lot of experiences that add in and education which opens all the doors for us, but your best comes from inside you. It's already there. You have it. You have that dream inside you, and all you need to do is work towards it, believe in it, nurture it. And when the plans change, go with the flow. Make a new set of plans, but don't give up the dream. Who you really authentically are, with all your ideals and values intact, with all your honesty and humanness, with all your dreams still breathing and still surviving, that is what's keeping you and the rest of this world alive. So go, follow your dreams, reach your new stars, venture into new skies, but remember who we each are, unique, God-chosen, and very, very special. Remember who you are, and you will reach those dreams. Congratulations. What a great day. My name is Hal Wolf. I'm president-elect of the Texas Lutheran University Alumni Board of Directors. I'm a proud 1977 graduate, husband of a 1980 graduate, and optimistic father of a 2014 graduate. <laughs> On behalf of the Alumni Board and TLU alumni in Texas, across the United States, and around the world, it is both my honor and privilege, especially in this centennial year, to extend congratulations and best wishes to this graduating class of 2012. Simply put, today is yet another crossroad in your life. 
Take comfort knowing that when faced with such circumstances before, you have made good choices, one of which is evidenced by your being here at this place at this time. No doubt you will encounter many challenges in the future. When those times come, charge ahead and do not be afraid to fail. It's been said many times by many people that if you're not failing, you're not trying hard enough. Of course, the flip side of failure is success. Winston Churchill said, success is stumbling from failure to failure with no loss of enthusiasm. Equally as important then as not being afraid to enthusiastically fail is not being afraid to spectacularly succeed. Today you will leave this campus, but you are invited and welcome to return often to reconnect with your classmates, your friends, faculty, and administration. Because memories are not only about people, but also about places, come back occasionally just to drive through campus to reminisce and watch it grow and evolve. Last, know that the diplomas pre presented here today have been earned by the hard work and sacrifice of each and every one of you. But know also that in your academic quest, you have been given much by many, be they parents, family, friends, church communities, and others. In Luke chapter 12, verse 48, Christ admonishes us that when someone has been given much, much will be required in return. Therefore, when you are so moved, remember to give some of your time, your talents, and your good fortune to TLU. In turn, you will be richly rewarded knowing that you have done your part to enable TLU to hold commencement exercises for the next 100 years. Good luck to all of you, and remember, dream big and help others. Thank you. Ready? <laughs> Will the Vice President for Academic Affairs please present the candidates for the degrees? Will the candidates for the Bachelor of Arts degree, the Bachelor of Business Administration degree, the Bachelor of Music degree, and the Bachelor of Science degree who have completed their work during the 2012 summer or fall semester please rise? Mr. President, those persons whose names appear on the program under the headings of Bachelor of Arts degree, Bachelor of Business Administration degree, Bachelor of Music degree, and Bachelor of Science degree have satisfied the requirements for those degrees during the summer or fall semester. And on behalf of the faculty, I recommend that each be granted the appropriate degree. By the authority vested in me by the Board of Regents and the Articles of Incorporation and Bylaws of Texas Lutheran University, upon recommendation of the faculty and with the approbation of the Board of Regents, I confer the degree of Bachelor of Arts, the degree of Bachelor of Business Administration, the degree of Bachelor of Music, or the degree of Bachelor of Science upon the students who have completed the requirements for their respective degrees with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities thereto appertaining. In testimony thereof, I ask the candidates to present themselves for the awarding of the diploma. Professional photographs will be taken as the diplomas are received. However, you are also welcome to take your own photographs. We only ask that you do not block the aisles as the graduates return to their seats. The candidates will present themselves as their names are called. Bachelor of Arts degree, Maggie Lynn Bergeron. <laughs> Chelsea Grace Craddock. Elizabeth Corey Crockett. Yeah. 
George Brady Duckworth in absentia. Gregory P. Govea. <laughs> Kenneth H. Gransbury, Jr. in absentia. Shannon Christine Hafterston, summa cum laude. Andrea Renee Jamison. <laughs> Courtney Nicole Gendrizi. <laughs> Oscar Asiel Luna in absentia. Neil Allen Lynch in absentia. Ryan Patrick McNeil in absentia. Mark Anthony Mejia in absentia. Andrea L. Morse. <laughs> GD Olatira Olabega in absentia. Amanda D. Person. Marsha I. Sagabil. Kimberly Isadora Scott in absentia. Julie Michael Udoisian. Jalisa Karen Walker. Andrew E. Wiesty, Jr. <laughs> For the Bachelor of Business Administration degree, Mary Esther Alvarado. <laughs> Linda L. Burrow in absentia. Alec Michael Conte. <laughs> Gary Lee Cooper, the second cum laude. <laughs> Brock Dunn. Amanda Marie Enriquez. John D. Hernandez. Aaron Joshua Warkovina, also receiving a Bachelor of Science degree. Chelsea Taylor Johnson, cum laude. Okay. Amy Lynette Lemon, cum laude, also receiving the Bachelor of Science. Candace Suzanne Mitchell, in absentia. Brad Orsi. <laughs> Ryan Bradley Schreier. <laughs> Megan Stawicki. <laughs> For the Bachelor of Music degree, Samantha Marie Catalano. Sarah Marie G. Flores. Yeah, 
William Kenneth Jurgens receiving two Bachelor of Music degrees. <laughs> Kevin Matthew Liddicke. <laughs> Kenneth Grant Middlestott, summa cum laude. Haley Morgan Seideman, summa cum laude. <laughs> Brant Anthony Zook, magna cum laude and receiving two bachelors of music degree. The bachelor of science degree. Drew McKager Albright, magna cum laude in absentia. Joshua Dean Arce. <laughs> ben Bates, cum laude. Jasmine Dion Collins. Tyler Clayton Collins. Desiree Kuvarubius. Brian Dietrich. Gerald D W. English, cum laude. <laughs> Stephen Edwin Fimble. <laughs> Robert H. French. Sarah Abigail Garza. <laughs> Amber Lauren Gold in absentia. Joshua William Goodlow. <laughs> Bernie Gutierrez III. Samantha Marie Hewitt. Davina Michelle Hurst. Theron Joseph Jerome. Pearl Marie Cafoya. Rachel Nicole Kubina, in absentia. Catherine June Kyle, in absentia. Patrick Aubrey Lynch. Esmeralda Lee Martinez. William Cody Miller. Rebecca Meyer, summa cum laude. Ryan Lee Nobles. Christopher Paul Padilla.
Royce Andrew Rodriguez. Victoria Elaine Santos. Taylor Michael Tate in absentia. Kyle Ray Tomlinson, cum laude. Sunny Elysian Valencia Belante. Yeah. Brian Wheaton. And for the Bachelor of Arts, again, Mark Anthony Mejia. Ladies and gentlemen, the graduating classes of August and December 2012. Well, I know everyone's anxious to be on their way. I'm picking that up. No doubt you have celebrations awaiting and holiday planning to attend to. Graduate schools, fiancés, and even paying jobs await. <laughs> but allow me just a minute to say goodbye because we will miss you a lot. This is a bittersweet time for those of us who stay behind. I was a faculty member at a small college for many years, and my happiest memories of that time were of commencement, especially the part that is now about to begin, sifting through the joy-filled crowd, looking for students we taught and advised and became friends with, receiving the often tearful thanks of grateful parents, and posing for some of the happiest photos ever taken. Watching you cross the stage makes us feel good about ourselves. Your graduation is an affirmation that we have done our jobs, of course, that job was more difficult for some of you than others. <laughs> but I promise that the faculty and staff take more satisfaction from the work they have done for those of you for whom today's happy occasion was perhaps more in doubt. But in fact, we really won't know how well we've done our jobs for a while. TLU has more ambitious goals than producing credits and distributing diplomas. We are satisfied with nothing less than changing your lives. And as I look at this group of graduates, I have a lot of confidence that we have succeeded. Despite the insistence, however, of accrediting agencies and bureaucrats, we won't know that for a while. Let me acknowledge that it's more difficult to be a December grad. We do our best, but it's not the same pageantry that comes with May graduation, We're out on the lawn, campus in spring bloom, the orchestra, the ceremonial climax to the academic year. December commencement comes upon us quickly and competes with Mother's Day. Or in May, we are competing with Mother's Day. In December, we're competing with Christmas. <laughs> I'll let you decide which is more important. Uh, <laughs> it's a little bit like having a birthday on December 26th. But December commencement is no less meaningful. In fact, it's probably more so, particularly since the explosion of adults returning to college in the last few decades, the four-year college degree is becoming less and less the norm. There are a few of you, in fact five, that are graduating in seven semesters, and that's a remarkable accomplishment. And some of you are in degree programs for which it's just well nigh impossible to complete in four years. 
However, many of you here are, are here today because you encountered a hurdle or an opportunity that knocked you off the normal four-year path. There are any number of reasons, a late change in major, financial setback, study abroad opportunity, a class that you failed or dropped. And for our transfer students, it took, it took you some time to get here. But you overcame those obstacles and did not let them end your dream. As Dr. Tafoya said, you changed your plans and you didn't let it end your dream. Stuff happens, setbacks must be overcome. Your schedule or your friends or families may not be the plan God has for you. And I swear that I, was, I wrote these lines before you got here, Dr. Dr. Tafoya. <laughs> As, as she uh, quoted John Chancellor, the old saying, God laughs at those who plan. By overcoming those challenges, you've shown that you have what it takes to adapt and succeed in an unpredictable and changing world. So this is normally the time when I make the final charge to the graduating class and I challenge you with lofty goals. Become a leader, make a fortune and give it it all away, make a difference in the world. However, with the December class of 2012, I don't feel the need to do anything but open the door and send you on your way. This graduating class has as much potential and talent as any I've ever seen. In the brief time Michelle and I have been here, we've come to know almost every one of you. The past couple of weeks, we've been with most of you at luncheons or ceremonies celebrating your time here. And we have witnessed what you're capable of in choir, orchestra, athletics, campus ministry, the Black and Gold President's Council, student teaching, and community service, and we've been very impressed. You truly are bulldogs. We all are going to miss you very much, and it's going to be a challenge to fill the void of your leaving. But it is time. So be on your way, full of confidence and purpose, and thanks be to God. Will you bow your heads as I do the benediction? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day and all the blessings you have bestowed upon us. We are grateful to you for the opportunity to attend college and obtain our dreams. Thank you, Lord, for keeping us throughout the years of study and our development. We thank you for the faculty and staff of this great university. We, you, you, you have used them as mentors, laboring to pair each of us to approach the world with vibrant and innovative ideals that will shine forth your light through us, making us making a positive difference in the world. We also, thank, we also thank you, Lord, for our parents, grandparents, other family members, and friends that you have prayed for, that have prayed for us, helped us, believed in us, supported our dreams, and now stand with us celebrating this glorious day. God, we are grateful for every fellow student at TOU. We, are truly become, we have truly become a family to one another. You have given us the strength to face the many challenges of the demanding college life, building skill and character. 
We thank you for allowing us to finally celebrate the triumphs of hard work and determination. Lord, we pray you will open doors of opportunity for us to, for us, for us to use what we have gained these past years. You have equipped us for every good work as leaders in our fields of studies. As we enter a new chapter of our lives, we are reminded of your words according to Joshua 1.9. says, have I commanded you, be courage, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid, do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. We are truly grateful to be graduates of the prestigious Texas Lutheran University, December class of 2012. In Christ's name we pray, amen. amen. Students at TLU engage in high-impact educational experiences that include civic engagement, aesthetic expression, critical thinking, and a focus on intercultural knowledge in a community that welcomes the interplay of faith and reason.